All right, well, we have been watching that inflation number in Canada today change expectations for how soon we might see interest rate cuts in this country. In the U.S., we are gearing up for an interest rate decision from the U.S. Federal Reserve this week. And you have started to see some of the market's expectations for when the Fed might cut change. Just looking at what was happening in the market yesterday, there was a point where we did see odds of a Rate cut by June slipped below 50%. Our next guest, Tom Porcelli, told us last time that uh, uh, when it comes to the inflation fight, that there's been a lot of progress made. So we'll see what that ultimately means on the rate story. Tom is chief U.S. economist at PGM Fixed Income. Tom, great to see you. Thanks for the time. Yeah, thanks for having me. Um, I guess since there is no interest rate decision, uh, there's sorry, there is no uh, likely move on interest rates for the Fed this week. What are the key things you're going to be watching for with this decision? Yeah, so look, I, I think it's really it comes down to the dots, right? The dot plot. It comes down to the SEP, the summary of economic projections. I mean, these are the things that I think everyone's going to be really sort of um, clued in on uh, as to you know sort of what the Fed is thinking going forward. Um, I, there's a lot of discussion about, um, you know, does the Fed take their, their current expectation for three cuts this year and do they lower it to two cuts? I, I, I think that would be a mistake if, if they do that, and it's probably a, something we should talk about a little bit more. I think also within the SEP, uh, I, look, I think if, if they were going to do that, right, if they were going to go from three to two cuts, uh, then, you know, that's not um, costless. I mean, they would have to actually do something else within their um, economic projections, and that would mean probably raise inflation. Um, uh, their forecast. I, I don't think that that's the message that they actually want to go for. Um, I think it would, it, 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 on some level, I would be sort of disappointed if that's what they did, because it would show that they were being swung around by a couple of monthly data points that were clearly, uh, um, I think, not consistent with what, what has been the general trending in, in inflation, which is to say it's, it's, it's been slowing. The last couple of months have just been quirky. And, okay, so at the end of the day, uh, we keep talking yep. in this country about sort of this this balance, right? Like if inflation yep. is not technically at the finish line, although, you know, people have all their different metrics for, for what the real inflation picture looks like, but if we're not at the finish line, is there a greater risk to not getting there versus just sort of holding out for a longer period? I know um, the Canadian and American economies are in different spots, uh, quite literally, uh, but just, you know, for, for those who, um, uh, who are wondering about the, the trade-offs, how you're looking at them. So I, I think the, the the first thing that I would highlight is you know ask ask most folks if they know what the Fed's preferred measure of inflation is doing right now because I think most people don't right like I think most people say oh well inflation is sort of seems to be leveling out and and when they say that what they're actually highlighting is CPI that's not the Fed's measure of inflation the Fed's measure of inflation is PCE. Um, and their preferred measure of inflation has done nothing but slow. And by the way, it's not that I think CPI and PCE are so divergent. They just have different weights um, for other components, like shelter, um, which has been, um, again, quirky over the last couple of months. It's, the general trend has been for slowing. So if you look at the Fed's preferred measure of inflation, um, headline PCE, it's 2.4%. Um, and is and has continued to slow. We'll get a fresh print on that. I think in the next week, it is this 19th in about a week, we'll get another one. Um, the the core measure will continue slowing. Right now, it's at 2.85 percent. It'll slow to about 2.77 percent. So, I think on balance, this is what the Fed sees. I think the Fed sees that inflation is slowing. I think the Fed realizes that policy right now at five and a half percent at the top end of the range is calibrated for an inflation rate that is meaningfully higher than where it is right now. And as a result, I think they're going to feel very comfortable scaling back on, on all of that uh, aggressive um, tightening that they put in place. So our view remains sort of unchanged at this point. We've continued to say since last year that the Fed would raise rates three times this year, starting around the middle of the year. Um, that remains our call. And I guess for, um, for investors who are trying to uh, position based on things like inflation and interest rates and the economy, it does feel like, just because I know you're not an equity strategist, but it, it's been hard to slow down the S&P 500. It does feel to a certain degree like even though we're going to have some debates on where things go in the short term, that the fact yeah. that the economy has held in relatively well has made yeah. people feel 
generally okay about this situation, which I think if we went back a year ago, Tom, you know, regardless of what your own modeling was telling you, it, you could feel the jitters in the marketplace about where the economy was going to potentially end up. Yeah, I, look, I think that you, you sort of summarized it perfectly. I mean, look, he, here at Pedram, we, we've, we've continued to say soft landing is uh, the, 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 the direction that we're going, but we recognize fat tails, right? We think that we're in a fat tail risk um, set up, meaning, yes, we, we think that there's an elevated probability relative to sort of the steady state of, uh, of, of a recession in the coming year. We take a probabilistic approach to this, but we also think that um, on the right side of, of the tail of the distribution, that we can easily see sort of a, a more um, a, a more robust economic backdrop evolve over time. Now, as I've been fond of saying, I think you might have to go through the left tail before you get to the right tail. Um, but I, I think in in the context of a backdrop that seems to be moving along, again, I think at a slower pace in the coming year and, and even beyond um, than what we saw over the last year or two, um, I think that the Fed will feel very comfortable taking back some of the aggressive tightening. 